What a fun race yesterday. Chris Graham here uh, with Rod Mullins on Monday. We always talk about NASCAR and uh, Kansas, uh, you know, if there for a while, it was, it was kind of a cookie cutter race. The last 40 or 50 laps, things got really interesting down the stretch. We had, boy, we had some, some tight racing, some uh, back and forth at, at, for the lead the last few laps. We had a spin out on the final lap and, and a, a last lap uh, change of lead. And then we had a fight afterwards. Rod, there is so much to uncover here. Yeah, there is. I mean, this this race really wasn't uh, anything to write home about at the beginning of it. I think the only thing that probably scared some people at first, if they were Kyle Larson fans, was Tyler Reddick going in, uh, trying to shoehorn his way into position in between Ross Chastain. And I think it was William Byron in there, too. And I think what ended up happening, you know, here he goes and uh, Reddick, uh, well, Reddick bumps him is what he does. And then, uh, you know, Larson goes spinning, but he's able to recover and he, you know, able to finish second, but you know, that's not exactly all that happened at this race. I mean, it wasn't just a cut and dry uh, sort of race because the best racing probably happened at least 45 or 50 laps before the end of this one. And when it came down to it, you saw two cars, you saw Denny Hamlin for the Joe Gibbs racing Toyota, and you saw Kyle Larson in the Hendrick, uh, Hendrick cars.com Chevrolet trying to go side by side with each other, trying to cut the distance down. Um, I know Larson would uh, get an advantage going into one of the turns right there and would really put some space between him and Hamlin. And then Hamlin would cut the distance back on the rest of the part of the track. And the momentum just wasn't there for Larson to be able to hold on to the, uh, the race. And, you know, he, he ended up tapping the wall there once. And I think that slowed him down a little bit more, but then on the last lap, I think that was probably the biggest thing right there. Um, actually they, you know, they, they say that the chase started between, or actually at lap 221 of the 267 Hamlin closed in on che on his Chevrolet of, uh, Kyle Larson's on the final lap, loosened him up, uh, already loose race car, and then contact just a little bit of a tap on the right front from, uh, Hamlin's Toyota turned Larson around in the outside wall. Hamlin streaked on past, took the checker flag. And he ended up winning the race. Uh, Larson, second place, 13 point, uh, or I should say 1.307 seconds. He ended a 33 race drought with his victory at Kansas. It is 49th of his career, but things just started getting better after that because not only was it a Toyota sweep in three races, you had Kurt Busch winning there last year, the first race. Then the, when they went back, it was Bubba Wallace winning the second race. So both of those Toyotas, 2311 Motorsports, which is helped by Joe Gibbs Racing, and then you have Denny Hamlin. So they bound to share some intelligence and information about how to get around that track. But I think the, the end was probably the thing to talk about, and that was the fight that took place. And Chris, just go ahead and allude into a little bit of it and stuff and talk about it. The interview was taking place, and then all heck breaks loose. Yeah, Kyle Larson was being interviewed after the race, after finishing second. It was after the Hamlin interview. And mm -hmm. Hamlin was getting booed by the crowd. We'll note that. When he got out of the car, he, he loud boos, so like he was a wrestling heel or something. Uh, and then as Larson was being interviewed, uh, he, he, he we're watching a split screen. And uh, the split screen shows, what was it, Noah Gregson and yep. uh, Ross Chastain. Now Gregson, he he wasn't anywhere near. He was five laps down. Uh, so uh, and I, but Chastain and he were discussing something. It looked like I don't know if discussing is the right word. They were they were engaging. Oh, and, they were they were they were engaged pretty much. I mean, it wasn't a physical engagement like in ring and ring and marrying or anything like that. This was a phys physical physical engagement. Was well, it what like it was. Gregson got a punch in or a swipe yeah. in. I don't know if it was a punch, more of a swipe. And then there swipe. was a, a rather large gentleman in between them, and uh, he yelled. I want to say he held back uh, yeah. Chastain. Chastain afterwards said that. Uh, he was informed that uh, his team, uh, Trackhouse, uh, they don't engage in pushing matches. So, uh, right. Uh, but that large man who looked like he could, he could, uh, you know, take Shaquille O'Neal on for the for his size, uh, made sure that nothing else happened. But uh, yeah, Larson's Larson's interview, he he kind of he saw it out of the corner of his eye, I guess, and he he was having some fun with it too. So, 
Yeah, that was the talk. I mean, that that's what happened. Uh, what, so what's going on there between those two? Well, actually, these two swapped sheet metal at least twice during the race, uh, Chastain and also Noah Gregson. And Noah Gregson gets there, and he's talking about this race. And um, I saw some comments afterwards after they had broke them apart and, and everything. And by the way, the guy that you're talking about that broke up that fight, um, you know, I think the coach at UVA needs to see him about possibly a front line, maybe an offensive center, offensive yeah. line part, a role, because he was big. I would not have wanted to tangle with him. I think Vince but, McMahon uh, might want to give him a call and see if yeah. he wants to be a wrestler. Yeah. Yeah. I, or he might have been a might be a great wrestling bouncer for somebody <laughs> at one of those at one of those events. Yeah. But uh yeah, what happened? Chastain uh was there and Noah Gregson came down. He's hot, he's upset about it. And they get there in this little bit of a confrontation, and Gregson says some things, and then about that time, Gregson grabs him. He grabs Chastain by his fire suit. And then, like you said, he, he goes and makes a swipe at him and he misses, but <laughs> Ross Chastain came around and he got him in the, in the side, in the jaw actually is where he got him at. Because if you watch the, uh, instant replay on that particular hit, you see Gregson's head just sort of go sideways after that hit was made. And then these two guys get in between them and break them up. But, you know, Noah Gregson said, honestly, after the race, he just said, you know, we've got a, uh, he said, a very big man once told him, he said, we have a no push policy yeah. here at track house racing. Yeah. Now that's what Chastain said. That's what he was talking about. Yeah. And, you know, I think Noah Gregson more than anything else was like, I'm sick and tired of it. I think the entire field is sick and tired of Ross Chastain and the way he is driving on the track. And this just adds a little bit more to the, to the drama and everything else that's been going on with Ross Chastain. And I really have to say this, and I'm not defending him by any means, but Ross Chastain is kind of like the old fashioned NASCAR driver. He's the one that wants to make things happen. And I'm like, if these guys who are driving finesse racing don't like it, then he's just pretty much throwing a middle finger to the wind and a thumb to the wind and just saying, fine, I'm, I'm going to get into your head one way or the other. Gregson just decided young driver. He's rookie driver this year and everything for uh, legacy motor club. He wanted to stand up for himself and rightly so you want to do something like this, but this is one of those things that is it's, it's slowly boiling okay it's not like what happened here 30 years ago 20 30 years ago when ernie irvin got into so much trouble and ernie irvin was slapping people all over the track he was going into their door panels i mean he was going up he was spinning them out he was doing a bunch of different things and they finally called him in and they told him said you know you need to fess up and the two drivers that talked to him was of all people dale earnhardt and richard petty and he, they got him there and they told him, says, you're going to have to, you're going to have to pull back on this a little bit more. And he got up and he apologized in, in the driver's meeting. Chastain's done this. Chastain said, you know, Hey, I'm, I'm sorry if I'm, if I'm driving a little bit rough, but still, you know, the name of the game is winning races and you try to win races and you try to do what you can with what you have in front of you. And if that means you put a tap on somebody like Denny Hamlin, what he did to, you know, Kyle Larson, then so be it. You have to do that to win some races. And I think they're going to have to get over this thing. They're going to have to man up. Some of these guys need to man up a little bit. And, and that, that may be taking it a little bit too far, but that's just the way I feel about it. If you're going to race in NASCAR, you need to get back to what the basics are. And that is, if it means rubbing, if it means taking some air off of that uh, rear air dam, and you're going to go and that uh, spoiler back there in the back, then so be it. Uh, that's what it's all about. That's what racing is supposed to be. So, uh, you know, at least in the post-race uh, interviews, it didn't seem like uh, Kyle Larson had any issues with um, Denny Hamlin for uh, uh, getting spun out there on that last lap. Uh, was, was, was there any reason? I mean, that was, was, was that just hard racing? I think it was a little bit of hard racing, but, you know, the fans already don't like Denny Hamlin for some of the most outspoken things that he has said this past year or said in the last couple of years. And, you know, now he's got him a podcast uh, over on uh, Dirty Mo Radio where Dale Earnhardt Jr. has his podcast. And he's telling it like it is. And I'm sure that there's some people out there that just don't like Denny Hamlin because they feel like he cries over everything. 
But, uh, you know, actually, when you're in that kind of situation, the car's loose, you go up, you're wanting to take a little bit of air off of that car so you can get that advantage, break that. And once you have the momentum, you want to break around that car and be able to go for the lead. And I can't really blame him for that, but I, I kind of figured there were going to be some fans out there that just got there and said, you know, did you see what he did to Kyle Larson? You know, he put him in the wall. <laughs> It's just a part of racing. That's all. That's all it was. And I don't think that there was any kind of malice with it. I know that Chris Gabehart, Denny Hamlin's crew chief said after the race, he said, Denny Hamlin just beat the most talented race car driver in the world. What does that say? And I think it, it gives a compliment to Kyle Larson being one of the most talented race car drivers in the world right now at this point. And still you can have your bad days out of it and you can still wreck and end up losing a race out of it to something like this from good hard racing. Uh, there was also uh, some attention during the race. Uh, the Fox uh, crews uh, were paying attention to the battle for third place. Uh, William Byron and Bubba Wallace were, were uh, back and forth there uh, the last few laps. Um, those two guys had a pretty good day on the track. Yeah, they did. They had a pretty good uh, day on the track and uh, you really can't fuss too much about that because um you know, Bubba Wallace was, he, he knows that track. He was driving his heart out on that track. That's where he won at last fall. But, you know, it was still one of those things of where, um, you've got William Byron in there. He's hungry to kind of prove a little bit more of, you know, what he can do. He's trying to prove that Hendrick is not exactly a fluke this year. And some of the races that they've won, although, you know, there's people questioning things about, um, you know, the way Hendrick is going, the way that they have gotten off on some of the rules and so forth. But, uh, you know, he's trying to, he's trying to lead the mark, so to speak, chase Elliott, you know, he came in there, he still finished uh, respectable for this race and so forth, but you know, this was a tough race. I mean, you know, I just can't say it any other way and stuff. Kansas is a tough track. Kansas may, some people may look at it and just say, well, like what you, uh, led into when we were st uh, ta uh, starting this podcast. And that was, it's not a cookie cutter track. It may look like one, but it's not one. And that's what we saw with this race, especially with the 50 or 60 laps to go. We saw, we saw some really good hard racing in this one. And, you know, I'm sure Bubba Wallace would have liked to have been there, uh, toward the very end and stuff, but, you know, uh, Christopher Bell you know, he went and clipped Ross Chastain. If anybody ought to have been mad, I guess Chastain, you know, could have went and he could have went after Christopher Bell in this. Uh, he clipped his car. Bell spun into the wall, damaged his car beyond repair. But, you know, Bell at least owned up to it. He said, I'm trying to get a little too aggressive on the side draft. And he said, I got into the one car and I spun out. So that's his, but he didn't blame Chastain for anything. So, you know, it's kind of the other flip side of that coin. But, uh, yeah, Byron and Wallace, uh, they ran a pretty good race there for the beginning of this race up until the time that everything started kind of coming apart. And then you had uh, Larson and Hamlin dueling for the lead. So last year, we had a lot of uh, single winners. We had a long mm -hmm. stretch of, of you know guys winning their first race. This year, we've already had, I guess we got Larson with the two wins, Byron with two, Bush with two, and then Bell, Truex, Hamlin, Reddick, Logano, Stenhouse with, with one each. Ross Chastain has the most points of anybody, but he hadn't mm -hmm. won a race yet. Right. Um, Harvick's also, uh, Kevin Harvick's also in the, the mix up there with uh, some good point totals without a win. Um, we're getting far enough into the season now. We can start thinking about the standings, I guess. Yep. Um, uh, you know, some guys who, who are on the, you know, right now we're in May, but would be on the wrong side of the cutoff include some names like Chase Briscoe, Bubba Wallace. Mm -hmm. Uh, Austin Sendrick, we've we've seen in past years have success. Uh, Eric Amarola, AJ Allmendinger, um, you know what what's it going to take for some of those guys to uh, to you know get through there and and uh, and get a, get a win and and get up get you know get some points and get themselves in the playoff mix. Consistency, I think that's going to be the biggest thing of anything. Uh, you know, uh, at least right now, uh, I I think if you go on down that list and you look, uh, Chase Elliott's like. He was 37th, I think, in points. I think at one point where he's kind of come back. I don't know where he stands at right now. I've not seen the updated, but he's still out of contention right now for the top playoff spots. If they were taking the top 16, I think he would be out. He wouldn't have a chance in it. So, you know, the consistency. He's got to continue running with consistency through the rest of the season. You've got other teams in there, and I, I'm just going to give credit where credit's due. 
Stuart Haas Racing has been able to put together, I think, a, a very fine farewell tour for Ke uh, Kevin Harvick here. As Harvick's getting ready to retire at the end of the season, he's going to go into the broadcast booth. But Harvick has been consistently at the front of the pack. He's been up there in the front. He's been running top 10, top 15. And he's managed, you know, at certain points, he's got some stage points out of things and he's come away. He's, he's in a good position. If he can stay this consistent, maybe pick up a win or two down, uh, down the stretch here before we get into the playoffs by late August, 1st of September, then he has himself poised to, you know, secure a spot. He could save that spot. Um, as for others. I'm going to tell you another team that's running consistent, uh, right now, but they've had some bad, uh, they've had some bad weeks, some, uh, some bad finishes is, uh, Roush Fenway Keselowski, uh, RFK racing has had some inconsistencies here in the past week. And then these two guys, Keselowski, and then also Chris Busher, they finished like 16th and 17th yesterday. So that's consistent for their teams, considering where they were last year. Uh, they'd like nothing more. Keselowski says the wind's going to come. The wind's going to get there and stuff. Busher's already had one. Keselowski's going to get one here soon. And I think when he does, that's going to kind of change the landscape a little bit more. But um, Austin Sendrick, you've got Ryan Blaney right now. Ryan Blaney is not having a good season. Uh, there's people saying, you know, what is wrong with Ryan Blaney? Uh, there's people even asking the same question about Logano right now. Logano got out of the gate pretty well. Now Logano has been sort of inconsistent the past couple of weeks, even dating back to Bristol. He wasn't that consistent at Bristol. And so, uh, I think that's the name of the game right now is stay consistent, especially getting into Coca-Cola 600 uh, at Charlotte on Memorial day weekend. Once they get past that and they get past that race, that's the one of where everybody can kind of take a, a big sigh. They can uh, ease back with their Budweiser or whatever they want to do and say, we made it through this first part of the season. Now let's see what we need to do to recover or to build on this next part, this summer part of the season and what we have to do going into the playoff stretch. So the, the uh, series heads to Darlington on Sunday, uh, one of the uh, favorite old-time tracks there mm -hmm. um, on the NASCAR circuit, Sunday at 3 o'clock. Uh, what, what should we look forward to uh, this weekend? Well, throwback weekend at Darlington. Man, I love throwback weekend. I can't say enough about it. You'll see a bunch of cars in the different uh, styles, the different looks of some of the, uh, old drivers from years gone by. I think somebody's even going, um, I believe with a scheme that looks very much like, um, Alan Kowicki's car, if I'm not mistaken, I know they're bringing back, uh, UPS is going to be on Ross Chastain's car. Uh, Kevin Harvick is going to be the, um, He's going to be running what was originally his planned debut scheme. And that was years ago when he first started out with uh, Richard Childress. And it was supposed to have been Sunny Delight. He's going to be running his Sunny Delight car. Um, Chase Elliott's going to be having a car in there that's got the old number nine with the Ever uh, the uh, Everham logo that's kind of built into the number nine car. Uh, they've got some good ones uh, actually going to come out of this one. Um, let me keep on looking. I'm scrolling down through here. Oh, yeah, they've got one. Joey Logano is actually going to have a really good-looking car, the 22 Ford. Uh, a Mark Donahue throwback scheme. That's one of uh, Roger Penske's early NASCAR drivers when he went into the sport. And it's going to be a red, white, and blue, similar to what they used to have, I think, with an old AMC Matador. That's what they used to run in the circuit uh, back in those days. But going to be so many different kind of uh, color schemes and so forth. It's going to be uh, available for a lot of these cars. Uh, one other one that kind of stands out with me, um, Alex Bowman is going to be having a uh, 2007 Xfinity Series throwback scheme on his car. And uh, it's just, it's going to be a nice weekend. I, this is what I like about throwback weekend. I wish they'd have it a little bit more often, but you know, right now, Darlington at the, the queen of the tracks, if you want to call it that the older one of the tracks, uh, that's what they want to do. And they, they love having throwback weekend. So it will be uh, very interesting to see some of these cars this weekend, how they, how they perform out on the track. Should be indeed. That's three o'clock on Sunday on FS1 and uh, go to Augusta free press on Facebook. You'll see some uh, updated coverage from Rod, and of course, Rod and I will get back together next week and break it all down for you. Yeah, Rod, as always, we'll 
Oh, yeah. As always, thank you for your time and your insight. I appreciate it, Chris. Thanks.